Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the second segment, episode 198 of Sold with Updike Pew. I'm Jeff Updike. I'm Weston Pugh. And today we're going to talk about understanding the economic market cycle and kind of what we're seeing happen right now and what we think we'll be seeing over the next 12 to 18 months. I think that we got the idea because um, our CEO, Chris Kelly, provides a real estate roadmap and he gave us some really great information that we thought we're going to try to explain it as well as he did, so bear with us, but it has a lot of great information in it. And I think that it is one of the elements that we get asked all the time. I know I was at a birthday party this weekend and everybody was asking what's happening with rates. Everybody this weekend asked me, so what's going on with the market? What's going on with the market? Mm -hmm. And again, like we were talking about in the first half of the show, we were talking about these giant brush strokes that people use to discuss real estate or when they come at it from a national average, mm -hmm. if they're not talking about rates that are conforming or if they're not talking about surveys, a lot of it doesn't apply. It yeah. is very specific to a zip code, a neighborhood, and a left or right side of the street. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, one of the uh, uh, one of the things that that was interesting was, where, when are we going to show that slide, the slide of the economic All later on? Okay. Um, the economic slowdown that we're seeing right now is, I think it was kind of started by the pandemic, yep. but it, it, it kind of exacerbated because I feel like the pandemic, while it probably should have slowed the economy, really kind of sped things up. Well, it scared everybody to death. And so, you know, the government was trying to figure out how to make sure that it didn't come to a screeching halt. And so they can either do a monetary lever or mm -hmm. they can do a fiscal lever. And so by pulling on that fiscal lever, Congress and presidents were able to take and actually provide the economy and Americans with a lot of money. Yeah, and they, they, they basically printed a trillion dollars. So whether it was a PPE loan or if it was uh, you getting a check because you're staying at home and you the, can't go to work. Economic stimulus checks, yeah. This was just money that was coming into it. And on mm -hmm. top of that, to make sure that everything was okay, rates got lowered. Again, we thought they'd never go lower than they were in what, 2020? And then, or 2019. And so you get this giant, you've got free money and you've got low interest rates and what does it do to demand? Mm -hmm. Everything shoots up. And so we saw this real mad dash in the last 24, 18 months to buy real estate. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether people were buying the second home, I mean, we saw so many lake houses just mm -hmm. going for astronomical prices. Mm -hmm or people just trying to upgrade or just buy their first home. It was a huge push. It was like yeah. trying to eat an elephant in one bite. Yeah, huge log jam. Log jam, and then what kind of made it worse, and we really saw this in new home construction, was the fact that the supply chain was so disrupted. Mm -hmm. It was, the, I mean, and the cost of lumber just from the demand itself was going up so quickly. Mm -hmm. And then when that supply chain issue came in, builders were unable to get windows. They were unable to get cabinetry. Uh, they were unable to get flooring. Uh, a lot of that is produced in other countries and needs to be shipped in. Yep. Other countries shut down because of the pandemic. There weren't people to load the trucks or load the ships. There weren't people to unload it when it got here. I mean, how many did, did, they, did you see those 60 Minutes segment where they were talking about the ports and how they couldn't get stuff on? And Biden was saying he's paying extra oh. to everybody to get everything in and mm -hmm. out. And then what couldn't get out got more expensive because it was out on the ships. Yeah. So we had this giant swirl, and that's when the inflation kicked in. Mm -hmm. So that's when everything shifted, and the other lever got pulled, and that's the fiscal one. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? Fiscal? Fiscal. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So. And that's when the Fed really begins increasing the overnight rate that the banks charge each other for, or the Federal Reserve charges for money. And that while that does not directly affect mortgage rates, it is the it's the bellwether that all interest rates kind of look back to. So, if you go to get car financing right now, your interest rate's going to be higher. A lot of credit cards have a variable rate interest on them, and so and the average American carries a balance of seven thousand dollars. Yep. So, your cost of having that balance went up four hundred dollars a year. And I think that you're right. And when you said that we are one of the first ones to feel that push because we are sensitive to rates. And so you can see that here in the top left-hand corner when everything began to slow down, and that really made the economists nervous and banks began to loosen what the requirements were, which actually dropped interest rates. And then the once the interest rates drop, the housing activity overheats 
and that's when the inflation comes in and then the central bank begins to tighten uh, tighten the economy up and, and interest rates rise and that's what we're seeing right now is we're seeing that housing activity cool and so housing activity cools and then because the inflation we're trying to get our hands wrapped around that slow that down a little bit and then once that happens they're looking for this perfect equilibrium to where they can then begin to take and drop interest rates to increase the housing activity. So as you can see in the slide, we were the first ones to feel it, and we we're also the first ones to feel it as it is concluding. Yeah, the, 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 word across, the words across the top make really kind of tie it all together to Vermeer because housing is so central to the economy. 100%. Uh, you know, the average, the, uh, the average home buyer spends $60,000 the first year after they buy a home. And people are like, well, it's not just the transaction that we're talking about. Right. Because we're talking about sprinkler system, where we're talking about the remodel, the ceiling fan, the furniture, Furn the carpet. Mm -hmm. All of these things contribute and are under the umbrella of housing. Mm -hmm. So we are basically the backbone of the economy. And the, the last slide we're going to show you talk, is a recession graph. And this kind of charts the the recessions over uh, since the 30s. And as you can see, the re those recessions normally... Uh, are you know they're a year or so they uh the recession that was uh 2010 2007 I'm, yeah 2007 was about two years long yep and one of the things that made that recession so um, difficult on the real estate is because actual real estate was the cause of that entire recession so this is uh the orange shows you that that is the uh, bear market and the blue is the uh, bull market and as you can see, typically the bull market lasts much, much longer than any of the uh, bear markets. So keeping that in mind, one of the great things I guess that I would say in conclusion is that if you're going to be in real estate, Dallas and North Texas is a great place to be in real estate. It is, and it's an even better place to own real estate. The, um, the, the, the big takeaway to me is owning, I, I've never had anybody in my career say, Gosh, I wish I'd sold that house. Da 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 da. They never do. Ne ne people never say that. They always say, "God, I wish I hadn't sold that condo in 19, whatever." It'd you know? be worth so much money now. Yeah. So North Texas is a great area just because of the infrastructure, because of the number of jobs that are moving here. One of the other big cattle or uh, bellwethers to corporate America is that we are a fiscally responsible state for the most part, and hence we have become very very friendly to other corporations. Hence, you see all the different license plates across Dallas as you're driving, whether it's Georgia, New Mexico, or California. They're all coming here. So we hope the information that we've provided today has been helpful. If there's other topics you'd like for us to talk about, we'd be happy to do that. Just reach out. Let us know. Uh, if you'd like to see a property out in the marketplace, certainly reach out to us. Let us know. We'd be happy to make that happen. And just remember, we want to be Realtors for Life. When you're ready to talk real estate, you can reach us online, by phone, or by text at 214-377-2223. And remember, we want to be Realtors for Life. When you're ready to talk real estate, you can reach us online, by phone, or by text at 214-377-2223. And remember, we want to be Realtors for Life.